What's up guys? Finally I had the chance to tune this. So I spent a couple days just working on this and hopefully it can help you out. Uh, please note the tune itself is for this Explorer. You know they changed to FC and you know this might not work for all Explorers so just you know take what you can uh, even bits and pieces of the tune and see if it works out for you. And please leave in the comments below if it totally you know felt worse or if it actually helped you out at all, or if you came up with an even better one, then let us know in the comments below and post it up, and I'd be interested in what you came up with. So before we get into the tune, uh, some people were complaining about the antenna. Even I had the same issues. Like I tried to go over two kilometers the other day and reception was already breaking up and stuff, and we all think this antenna is just too short for any long range stuff. So you see how you can actually pull it out a little more. Um, so I created like a new type of print. It basically uh, goes on and like, well, I mean, you have to take the antenna off first, uh, remove the top plate, remove the UFL cover, pop the two UFLs off, remove this antenna, and then put it into here and, you know, just replace it all back, right? And it, you should be able to extend your antenna about like one centimeter. Um, it'll probably help a little bit, but if you if you want it, uh, go ahead and download it on my Thingiverse. I'll put the description in the link below. Looking at the FC, oh, just look at this screw here, the stack screw. Look, if I if I press it up and down, you see how it moves up and down. That's what happens when you don't have a nut under here, like you know, a nut to secure because there's a little bit of play too. So say I'm rolling, flipping, or just flying, like this whole stack can shake up and down or like sway left and right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna secure each screw with a nut at the top here, you know. So so screw, carbon fiber, and then nut, and then, and then rubber grommet gummies, right? Here are the four M2 nylon nuts. Essentially what your M2 nut is replacing are these spacers under the stack. Okay, so I got a good angle here. I'm holding this M2 nut down and just kind of screwing it down until it's finger tight. Okay, we good. Repeat. Basically, I'm tightening these in a cross pattern and I tighten it until like my fingers start slipping on the tool. So you see now my my fingers are slipping. That that's pretty much good enough. Double check all the gaps. Make sure the ESC and the FC isn't touching each other, or they're not like pinching wires and stuff, because that could cause huge problems and make your quad smoke and stuff like that. So um, yeah, everything's everything has good spacing. Now this thing's not going anywhere. It still has you know enough damping, like you know for vibrations and while you spin and fly like these screws aren't swaying along with the drone and like messing around like that you you definitely want to get a smoke stopper before you plug in your lipo um so the one i like using is this um gap rc there's this light on the side that lights up green and if the light turns off that means you have a problem you want to unplug it right away try it out right now you can see how it looks so we're gonna plug it in and look for the light. Okay, see, I don't, you see how I don't plug in the LiPo all the way? Because just in case, <laughs> you know, you want to, like, a quick, you know, a quick, like, unplug. That Lion battery has to be perfectly balanced with your quad, or the tune's not going to work, the diving's still going to feel horrible. So you see how I line it up to those um, two set of bolts there near the front? So just edge to the bolts and you could possibly do that with the 1100 mAh battery as well every second or so you see like a little bit of a vibe in the footage um, so first thing you need to do a uh, tip from one of the viewers i'll write his channel below but he changed his escs to 96 pwm all my previous explorers were like that as well but this new one is flashed at 48 PWM. So 
he was curious and tried it and he said it flew better so I was curious and I tried it. I think this solves most of that. So the new FC is flashed with using this escconfigurator.com so I'll teach you how to do it quickly. Uh, so just find your port first. Uh, this one, oh I gotta turn off beta flight. Okay so hit connect, plug in your lipo, make sure your props are off and then connect. Don't worry about this. Read settings. And then, so I already done it, but um, all you have to do is click flash firmware to this ESC, uh, select the newest version, and then select 96 PWM frequency, and then you go flash. Okay, and you just do it for each one, and once you've done it for each one, you can finally disconnect. All right, let's get to the good part of this video. So how does this tune feel? Well, honestly, I only flew the Flywoo tune like two times, so I didn't even get familiar with it. For you guys who've been flying the Flywoo tune for a while, maybe you'll feel the difference. Please leave in the comments below what you felt, worse or better. For me, I just tuned it how I want it to fly, as close as possible. This thing is more of an efficient flyer, right? So prop wash is still expected. Um, if it's windy or gusty, you're still going to get vibrations and blown around. But when it's a nice day, I think the tune got better. Gyro flow, you don't need to up the smoothness as much so it doesn't crop as much anymore. And the footage doesn't look like it looks sharper. And how does it fly? Well, to me, it feels... Have you ever held a sports car steering wheel? It's like nice and thick. It's nice and weighted. Well, this is exactly what it feels like now when I fly it. I can still control it really well. I can still fly it really well. I made sure the rates were to my liking where you could still cruise. And uh, especially with the 1100 mod GMB, it dives quite well now. And with the 3000 mod... Uh, Lion battery it dives pretty decent as long as you as long as you have the perfect weight distribution like how I showed you earlier but yeah overall it just it feels more stable and it's actually even more responsive to the sticks now so now I feel like with this tune it's a cruiser graduated to a sports cruiser so now I'm just gonna shut up and show you what I did so before you do anything go to your CLI type diff all and save to file and save it on your desktop or something if you don't like this tune at all just load it back and your quad will be good let's we'll start with configuration so I left the PID loop at 2 kilohertz um, it still seems responsive enough and I like how the CPU load here is you know still at 30 percent which is nice I changed my maximum arm angle to 180, you know, maybe uh, you just have to get out of emergency, like you're desperate, you want to arm it upside down, just get it out of a tree or something like that. Power and battery, because I'm using an LIHV battery, I just up this number to 4.4, PID tuning. So screenshot this right now, and I'm just going to tell you everything I changed. These are all different, okay, everything here. Anti-gravity, I changed it from 5 to 7. So you see it's 7 now. Um, dynamic damping, I changed the gain to 45. And very important right here, dynamic idle value, yours might say 0, change it to 48. Whether your battery is full or low, I turn on VBAT SAG compensation for consistency in the sticks. When I'm flying home and my battery's running out and I could barely make it over the river or something like that. I don't I don't want to feel that. So I turn this on. Rate profile, mine is beta flight and my RC rate is 0.92 across the board. My super rate is 0.65 across the board and I have zero expo because this already has expo built in so it's already going to be nice and smooth. If you add expo, it's going to feel like delays in the sticks and it's not going to be good. Filter settings. So let's talk about this a little bit. So I, I did tons of black box logging and this tune, there's barely any noticeable extra noise. What I learned from, you know, YouTube, like all of you, um, basically if bi-directional D-Shot is on, you don't actually need really gyro low pass one. I think some people said you could turn this off too, but I, I left it on. And this, I think I left it as is, what Flywoo did. 
If you didn't flash by directional D shot and you're copying me here, who knows what's going to happen to your quad? Like, you know, I don't want you copying these things, like turning it on stuff. Please read up on it. You got to know what you're doing. So you can see I have it at 1.2 here. This one's 1 1.2. I turned off yaw low pass filter over here. And in the motor tabs, I kept this at D shot 300. And motor pulls, I set it to 12. This one you can ignore. You see how it says dynamic idles active at 4,800 RPM. That is this over here, dynamic idle. If you did decide to modify the stack with the M2 nuts uh, to secure the FC screws, uh, remember to calibrate your accelerometer again. Put your quad on a level surface and hit calibrate and make sure it's level. Test it in angle mode because that I think that will affect your GPS return home. Cool guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Try the tune out. If you have any feedback, let me know. I hope it works out for you guys. If you don't have an Explorer yet and you're curious about what it is, go to my review video in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.